morning, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about my research, um, the different kinds of uh, things that we can do um, using DNA analyses, and tell you a little bit about sort of how I got into doing some of these things. We now live in the age of genomics. The complete human genome has been sequenced now for uh, coming up on a decade. But in fact, over the last several years, um, we've turned the tools of genomics, large factories full of automated uh, sequence analysis systems, incredibly powerful computer systems, to begin to look at the genomes of our closest living relatives, uh, bacteria, viruses, lots of other animals, and we're really beginning to understand sort of how life is working as well as how it got here. And that's sort of my main interest is in the evolution of how we got here. So after sequencing the human genome, um, and in fact now several humans have been sequenced, um, including uh, James Watson, the co-discoverer of DNA. His complete genome is available on the web if you want to peer through it. Um, we've also sequenced the chimpanzee's genome, our closest living relative. Um, and lately, we have sequenced the orangutan genome, the gorilla genome's almost finished, uh, the macaque genome, and in fact, several other primate genomes have been sequenced. And we're learning a lot from this. But the way we can learn the most about ourselves is by actually looking at our closest living relatives. Because nature has actually carried out a grand experiment through evolution. And it has actually tried many different ways of doing the same things. And sometimes when those things go wrong, in the case of, say, disease or something like that, Nature has often found a way around that and has, can tell us a lot about that. So while we can use our magnificent labs like here on this campus and other campuses and universities around um, the city and the country to investigate the patterns of disease in humans, I think we can gain many more insights by looking to see what nature has done over the tens of millions of years of our adaptation to our current environment. And as importantly, as our environment is changing, we really need to see some of the insights of how evolution has dealt with change in the past. We are currently worried about global warming. Well, from 23 million years ago to 12 million years ago, the planet also warmed up very significantly. And that actually led to the rise of apes and ultimately to the human lineage, such as ourselves. So we have adapted. And by trying to understand how we've done that in the past, maybe we can help the way that we'll have to adapt in the future. So when the macaque genome was sequenced, we actually began to make our first true major insights. When we nearly had the human and chimp genome, people would look at the differences and they'd say, look, here's where a human differs from a chimp. This must be what makes us human. But in fact, recall, something had to also have made them chimps. And so without a comparison, without a control, in this case we can use the macaque as the control, we would not be able to know which changes in the differences between humans and chimps, which changes occurred solely to humans and which changes occurred solely to chimps. So by examining their entire genomes and doing a direct comparison, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes because that's the project I am working on with your fellow students here, we are able to actually tease apart which changes occurred and even when they occurred. So we can see if certain mutations may have occurred during this period when the Earth was warming up um, in the last 20 million years, or if these changes occurred earlier. We can see if these changes occurred after the appearance of an infectious disease such as AIDS, the HIV virus, or the uh, malaria um, parasites began to infect humans and our close living relatives. 
If we see changes that occur immediately after that, those are probably, we can infer those to be important and maybe worthy of further study. So it's only by getting more and more of this sort of evolutionary data can we really piece together when and where and perhaps how some of these really important um, changes that affect our health.